five. Hmm. And I believe we are streaming live. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you. My name is Anna, and I am with Gary Strauss, um, coming to you from the New York Open Center. We are, the New York Open Center is the longest running urban educational institute dedicated to the healing arts, to spirituality. We are a home base for those people interested in training, practicing, learning about, meeting kindred spirits um, in all uh, conversations around uh, spirituality, spiritual practice, personal development and healing arts. The Open Center has been doing amazing work since 1984 and we are still doing amazing work. We are no longer um, just brick and mortar. We are now zooming in live uh, to all over the world and inviting people of all time zones to be with us. Today is super special because Gary Strauss is one of the people who's been with the Open Center. You did say since they opened. So now we're talking 36 years. You're dating yourself a little bit, which is great it's to your, your expertise. But Gary continues to teach at the Open Center. He is a, a master teacher of a polarity therapy and um, cranial sacral unwinding. And he's gonna talk to us and explain to us what that is. He has trained thousands of people internationally, nationally and internationally. He is the founder and director of an organization titled Life Energy Institute, where he teaches all of his, uh, his, his uh, frameworks on energy healing. And this is based in California. He travels to New York four times a year and he teaches live at the Open Center four times a year. So he is teaching with us in October, October 15th and 16th. And we're gonna talk about all of this and then land in really unpacking what you're going to be offering the New York's Open Center on the 15th and 16th in about a week. But your work, um, which you call is a holding space method that I'm really interested in understanding about is the result of over 30 years of your experience integrating energy medicine, nutrition and nat natural healing. So that's, you are a pioneer. That's what that, that says to me. So can we start with the beginning? Um, can you tell us what, what do you, I just said a lot of words, but, and it sounds like it's very an integral, an integration of, so can you tell us a little bit about what you do, what you're an expert on? I can. Um, I can tell you scientifically and I can tell you practically, and then I can tell you personally, but the world is made up of energy. Everything is energy based and and i don't know that people really understand what that means i understood that by studying physics and sciences in college that everything though it seems that everything is kind of solid mm. actually everything is moving and and it's moving vibrationally in physics they have a theory called string theory and it says that everything is woven out of vibrating strings or threads. That's the same theory in Ayurveda, the Indian energy medicine system that's thousands and thousands of years old. Mm. They call those threads Akka threads. They say those threads come from the great unknown, the Akash, where everything lives. And those threads here on earth weave the patterns of all things. Same theory in Ayurveda as it is in physics. And both fundamental to both of those is that uh, life is made up of energy, vibration and frequency. I have a, speaking of, I have a cat visiting me. He's going to, <laughs> he wants to listen into the lecture, so hopefully he'll behave. Animals know energy really well. Is that what's happening? I think so, could be. He's gonna sit in. My animals, I have a dog and she would, she wants to be, when I do my work, she wants to be in the room. She wants to be near the table. She'll find a right place to sit down and she just wants to be there. Hmm. 
Yeah. So tell me more. So I'm sorry. So let, land me back there. So the so you're talking about threads. Yes. That weave and create everything that you're pointing yes. to physics and our wisdom traditions. Yes. We live in a we live in the age where all of our ancient traditions are showing up scientifically in our knowledge base. Right. And there's a book by Fridjof Capra called Tao of Physics. Yes. Or even Larry Dossi wrote a book years and years ago, dates me, right? About energy medicine. And they're more contemporary people who've done this. But our world is um, is energetically based. We think, you know, it's solid. But it, the most solid things are vibrational. And as our scientists peer into the nature of those things, all they find are vibrations and probabilities. And so, wait, so then the real story is that we've been, we're energy-based beings. We don't, th we don't grow up like that. But in Aboriginal culture, and some of them, they grow up knowing they're, they're energy-based. Mm. And polarity is a Western synthesized approach to energy medicine. It was created by Dr. Randolph Stone. Okay. He studied all the medicine he could. He was an osteopath, a naturopath, an allopath, a chiropractor. He studied Egyptian medicine, Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine. His whole life was dedicated to finding what the key was to the healing process, or maybe better yet, Kind of interesting too. He was trained to be, he was, grew up in a family of ministers and he was supposed to become a minister. And instead he said he needed to do something that would help people more than that or in a different way. And he became a doctor. And his uh, search through all those medicines led him to the term life energy. And his first book was called Energy, the Vital Element in the Healing Art. And he did the same thing I just said to you. He did the science and he did the esoterica and he weaved it into a science and an understanding of life energy based principles and how those principles can be applied first just to living and being, but then also how to help another human being. That's amazing. It is. It really is amazing. I love that it's, it sounds like it's all these veins pointing to the truth. And then having somebody like himself and yourself guiding us around how to be with that truth. Yeah, and I would say to me personally, it feels like what I discovered when I found this. Like I was, uh, I always tell this story, I was an environmental engineer. And that's what I was doing. And I thought that would be my work in my life. And I found, I found polarity in college, so it was in the late 70s. And um, I was fascinated by it because it brought together those things I studied in science in a way that I had not even imagined existed. And as I started to do it, it kind of like made me feel good and made me feel real and whole. And it gave me a way to be myself even more than I was finding in my life and other things. And I think that's what it does for people, actually. I think it restores people to themselves and to their own field and their own, like we think in cranial in particular, but in polarity as well, that the very core of your body, the center of your brain and spine, is a place of primary energy of your essence or your being or your soul, if you want to put it that way. And that we get lost in the world a little bit to the, like right now, the world's crazy, isn't it? Yes. It's a little, you know, but as a, I would, if we look at the world as a person or a being, we would say the world's having a healing crisis. Right. Absolutely. And in this work, we'd say that's a good thing. Right. We wanted to go through the healing crisis of what it is because what we were living with before was kind of dysfunctional for today. Mm -hmm. And that's the nature of a healing crisis. You come up with symptoms that reflect how what you're living is not in alignment with where you are in the moment. And then you have to give up old things. And so we're in that, right? And, and what's happening, though, is the world wants to be right. People really want to be right with themselves. And this work, this energy-based thing, because a lot of people in the energy medicine world know that energy is beneath matter or is beneath things. And you can go before the symptom. You can go underneath things, and you can touch them energetically, and then those things will change because you'll come back to self and you'll reorient.
That's amazing. So, so there, I hear you making a distinction between polarity and cranial sacral. Yes. Can you share, can you unpack I can, that? I can, yeah. Okay. It's my favorite subject. You're just asking me all <laughs> the right things. Well, so, so cranial, so polarity clearly written in the books, etc., goes back thousands and thousands of years, right? It goes back to the beginning. It goes through every medical tradition and all the energy-based healing arts. That's what it is. It's an energy medicine system like Chinese medicine, but a Western synthesis. So that's polarity. Cranial in its origin goes back to the beginning of osteopathy and um, Andrew Taylor Still, who was a Western physician. He was a surgeon during the Civil War. And he was also raised to be a minister. His dad was a minister, minister all the way back. And he said, no, I want to be a doctor. And he believed, though, spiritually, that every cell in the body had its own innate intelligence. And he started, he believed that if we contact that intelligence, we would bring about a cure. And he started to do that work, and he called it osteopathy. He started the first osteopathic college. And in that day, osteopathy was physical medicine that believed in intelligence inside the body. And cranial comes out of that work. However, got to step back a moment. He grew up on a Native American reservation. Mm. His dad was a minister on a reservation. And he was exposed to Aboriginal thinking about life. And Aboriginals believe... Everything has its own intelligence and needs to be respected and honored for what it is. So I'm sure that he got that from Aboriginal people, and I'm sure cranial as well, really, not in its modern iteration, but cranial as well would go back thousands and thousands of years into traditional shamanic or traditional people's orientation to life that was energy-based. And the unique thing about cranial that makes it so elegant because it's a little more elegant than every other modality. And the thing that's so cool about it is that it takes very little effort to actually do it. It really harnesses innate intelligence, and it harvests, I think, heaven and earth and everything around to bring about energy movement and to get the system to take care of itself. Beautiful thoughts. That's beautiful. I have to say that I am not to digress, but I'm studying right now the work, what's called co-creative science with mm. by Michelle Wright. Oh. Um, I think it's also, she was inspired by Finhorn and yes. their belief that everything, everything, the lamp, the chair, the rock, uh, the f automobile, everything that we create in uh, what we call natural or unnatural actually has an intelligence that can be communicated with. Yes. Um, so I find that really fascinating because that's also talking about walking into that vibrational field and communicating with it yes. in whatever way it has been reshaped. Um, but certainly the human system being an easier way to understand that you can actually, you can connect and communicate to it. So much of healing has that in it regardless of whether you think about it or not. There's so much research that shows that the way that a physician approaches the healing paradigm greatly, great, forget the technology they're using, it greatly affects the outcome. Right. In the literature they call that bedside manner. In the energy world I call that holding space. The way that we are with each other is so profoundly important. And we just, I mean, I think these things are kind of simple and obvious, but we didn't grow up that way. Right. So then they're esoteric. I love it. I saw some video of you sitting with someone and just yeah. and demonstrating that, you know, she was on your table and she, yeah. you, know, you are a practitioner and she was a client and just you talking with her. And yeah. tuning into her, she was reporting that she, things were shifting in her neck. She could, and you would say, do you feel that? And she said, yeah, I do. But you never touched her. No, I didn't. You were with her. Well, old osteopaths know that that's true, that the field is more interesting, that the whole continuity of energy expression or breath or flow or mm -hmm. 
that that's way more interesting than whatever the the issue is that people are going through. And I'm I'm so captivated by that experience. That's my favorite thing is just to sit with someone and watch the process and and see what happens in them. I'm still mesmerized by that a little bit. I'm like, "Wow, that works so well." It's amazing. You know? Yeah. So, we talked about cranial sacral and we talked about polarity mm -hmm. and but I also have an understand that there's elemental and then we just talked about holding space. So will you mention what elemental is? So, so all of this is based, what's beautiful also about cranial polarity, it's all based on anatomy, it's all based on physiology, it's all based on the structure of energy flow. Um, it's, it's based on the physiology of energy. So part of that is you have a core energy in the center of your body, right? And out of that core come chakras, and out of those chakras come meridians, and out of those meridians and chakras and core energy comes field energy. And out of that comes your relationship to your life. And then we believe that field energy connects you to everything you're related to in your life, and even things that you don't even know about. Like people think about you, and that touches your energy, and you think about people, and that touches their energy. So we think, we think that you know, this very center pulsation of life is how we are related and connected. And in, in Tibetan medicine, they would say where, wherever that relationship is impeded are the beginnings of illness or disease. And they go to source, where did the energy get disconnected? And let's talk to it and let's have a relationship and restore. The chakras themselves have different elemental qualities. We are, this is a, a deeper thing about that is and it's like people don't grow up with this and because I think in our modern age, we looked at traditional people's mythology or uh, creation stories and we thought they were not real. They were just and they, stories. They're just stories that people oh, used. Yeah, but yeah. all of those stories are based on anatomy and science and physiology. Like in the Cherokee Nation, they have a story that we all came from the stars. Well, everything actually came from elsewhere. Nothing came from here. There was nothing here. There were no people here in the beginning. We all came from elsewhere. There might even be, they're going to find, or they have found already, that there is DNA out in the world. It didn't just exist right here. Right. So all of those myths have reality to them. And all of those creation stories are real. We just, you know, in our Western Petri dish-oriented science mind we said oh that just can't be true that the sky is your father or the earth is your mother but the truth is that we are made up of we are completely made up in the image of the earth we are we're made up in the image of the earth of the dirt of the water of the elements and all those elements of your chakra are in the elements they're the earth they're the water they're the fire they're the air they're the energy those things exist that's not like some you know, it's, it's not a, uh, a fantasy or something like that. It's an anatomy. So the class on elements is about learning how to be with the different qualities of energy that make up your body and your life and learning how to use those elements to bring balance to your body and your life. That's polarity. But our program, and, and this is important, yeah. I call it integrative craniosacral. That's my language for it. Um, but to be honest, I think, like Dr. Upletcher, who taught so many people in craniosacral therapy, their institute was integrative. They didn't just teach cranial. They taught 17 modalities. So they actually were doing an energy medicine approach to life. They just called it craniosacral. So, so all of this goes together for me, and, and that's why it's called integrative, because it weaves, you know, polarity is energy medicine. Cranial's at the core of it. Cranial is the center. There's no doubt that it is. It's the most profound part of it in some way. Mm, wow. And then the elements are ways to... So I, we have a program that is mixed with energy and consciousness and communication, but everybody does this. I just I think integrative is my way of... you know. Whereas Dr. Upletcher thought craniosacral therapy was his way of honoring it, my way is called craniosacral unwinding or integrative cranio. Yeah, integrative. So... I know that you have an institute in California 
and you teach for sure. And then do you also uh, practice uh, yeah. and be healing so people can come and, and be with you as a client? Mm-hmm. And then you teach so that other people can both understand, I'll use the word cosmology, this cosmology of energy healing Mm -hmm. um, for their own personal benefit, but also to, you also train people to be energy practitioners as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we have a school here in California called Life Energy Institute. It's a state licensed institution. We also grant licenses in massage through our school. If you, people want to do that, they can get their polarity, their cranial, and get a massage license. We are part of a, a we have programs in the US, in Europe, in Asia. We have sister schools. We have a, a degree granting college in Arizona that we are a part of. Our program's at the core of the school. You can get an AOS degree. You can get your massage license. You can get your polarity light, you know, you get everything. So we have been incredibly ambitious and aggressive with providing top level education that meets all the requirements of our culture. And we continue to do that everywhere. And I, I train, I work, I'm, this is my practice day. Um, actually, I actually canceled the client to be with you, Uh but I'm going to work after this. I'm going to be seeing people outside and I will work with them. I'll work with some people long distance through zoom because we can do this remotely. That's the beauty of energy work. It's really great remotely, even more powerful. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that today. I will train practitioners this weekend in a class here in California or outside. And then um, I also train uh, teachers and I help people develop schools and programs. So I'm like, I have done a lot of it. I have a pretty big worldwide institutional network and based here in California, but as I said, you know, kind of everywhere. And I will be in New York when I do that teaching and I will work with people while I'm there. So you'll both teach, but then also... Um, take in clients, you know, I will. Yeah. So you, you are, uh, you, you don't look at as tired as I would imagine you should be (laughs) for having such a big imprint, such a big reach. Uh, Would you credit your, the energy work that you know for keeping you strong and vital and engaged? I would say that as I've got older, I've gotten healthier. Mm-hmm. and more resilient and I don't have the kinds of issues that most people have because I've done this work and I would also say the only way that I could do everything I just told you yeah. is that I am related to incredibly great human beings everywhere mm-hmm. like I, I, I sometimes just cry when I think about all the people that I get to work with who do this and we all have the same intent we think this work is so vital, especially now, like for people, people come in so disintegrated, they leave and they remember who they are. And so, yeah, I'm ridiculously health. I'm stupidly healthy. It's like, I don't, it doesn't make sense on a lot of levels. You know, my hair fully grow up until this point. I had really, long, I've had long hair forever. Once in a while, when I have a spiritual moment, I'll take my hair off as a way to honor the moment of emptiness and what we've been going through qualifies. So I just took my hair off. But I grow full, long hair. None of my friends have hair anymore. You know, a little bit like that. (laughs) And I don't know, maybe it's just my genes, but the energy definitely makes a huge difference. Uh, Having, you know, the view in energy medicine really is very simple. Energy flows, you're healthy, energy gets restricted, we need to restore it. That's it. That's fantastic. Um, you said something earlier that you, you have been very, you all have been very aggressive was the word that you used about expanding. And I, I bet yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a belief under there, there's a mission under there. Can you share it? Yeah, well, the people that I'm related to and the people I train, they're all passionate about this. Um, none of us got into this because we thought it was a vocation. I didn't. I just thought I needed it. And it so anchored my life and helped me find a good way. It so gave me a practice and a sadhana and a way of relating to life that felt 
valid and it still does. I, I do as, I don't do as many sessions as I used to because I don't want to, but I do sessions every week wherever I go. If, you know, and I, that's so important to me. And I teach not as much as I used to teach, but I still teach the things that are vital and important within our network. And it's a pat, you know, it's, it's a life thing. It's not a, an object oriented thing. It's a thing that you have to do. You're kind of compelled, but I'm, maybe I'm a little unique in that. I feel in the, in, in, um, Chinese or in, in Japanese martial art, they have this term called terrible purpose. Mm when you are kind of like compelled a little bit, you know, to have to express yourself. Yeah. Now I feel, you know, in so many ways I feel, I've felt fully expressed in my life. Like not like I have to, I don't have to write a book or I don't have to be anywhere, but I need to share what I have. That's important. It, it this is what I said. The, in the Tibetan culture, Tibet was known as the land of, a thousand temples before the Chinese came. Mm. And the Tibetan cultural consciousness was, I, I never forget reading this and getting it, that they, everybody was a monk almost, or everybody was related to a monk, and everybody lived around these temples. And they thought, high up in the world where they are, having all those temples and all that spiritual work balanced out the earth. And I think that what we do adds balance to our culture and provides people with a way, a really simple way to come home and to reorient and to get well. And I'm here to hold that kind of space for people and at a community level for our community. Um, and we think that's the best thing we can do as human beings, really. So, you know, any version of any, I'm sure we have a mission statement like that, yeah. but that's the gist of it. That's it. Yeah. So this time that the globe is all experiencing everybody at once simultaneously, I would imagine is quite an invitation for people to find that ability to support one another, support themselves and support one another. And so this system is very ripe for being shared, especially now. I think it, you know, I, I would say, normally I even think that. I think that this energy work, and I would group in there. I wouldn't just say cranial or polarity. Like, I think it's our, our evolution for us to wake up that we're energetic beings. I really do. Mm. We need, that's part of our, we're going to start to find out that we are really affecting everything around us. And then maybe we're going to take a different kind of responsibility for that. But I think it's our evolution to do that. And so waking that up, and I think that's part of the evolutionary process to get people to get this and do this and be a part of it. And so, yeah, so then I think whatever I can do for that, that's what I need to do while I'm here. And, you know, there, there's a lot of things going on in the world. We don't, if we pay attention to the media, we're going to be ill. We shouldn't really, we should really have a, a strict diet when it comes to the media. Because the media is not a good representation of the world. In, in Los Angeles, we have food banks. You can't get, you, are, you cannot get on the volunteer list anymore to serve people food. It would take you years. That's how many people want to help. Like our world, people are helping each other everywhere, and it's just not in the media. You don't, except we have a news station that shows that, and that's the one that I watch. Right. So how do we not help each other? Right. In, in New York, there are, um, they're called free zers. And there are these free, all, all, when you walk this, uh, the streets of New York, you can see refrigerators placed outside, oh. full of food, and oh. you're invited to put in and to take out. Wow. And I've never seen that before, you know, but a, a sidewalk. Gives me chills. Freezers, and that's also not in the news. People no. really helping and being very humane and loving towards each other. Yeah. 
Well, tell me this. So I'm very interested in knowing more and, and what would be me as a student, my sequence of entering this body of work and training into it? Okay, so we have... The follow-up question to that is on October 15th and 16th. In, now, you're, you are offering this through the New York Open Center, but anyone anywhere in the world can sign up, right? Because this is happening online. Yes. So, so can you talk me through me as somebody who's interested in walking in and then how this, pro, this weekend fits into that? Yes. Yeah. So, well, first part is I have to... We've never done that before till this. And as we started to offer classes online, the, I could see how deep the work can go without being present. It actually goes deeper in some ways that it will when you're present. It's profound. So it's perfect for distance and online work. That's the first part. So we have a certificate program at the Open Center. It's called Integrative Craniosacral Unwinding Certificate. And those are carefully chosen courses at a base level that would give you just a grounded skill for yourself and to be able to hold space and work with the, this work with another human being. That's also true in any class that we teach. You will learn those basic skills and then in each class they usually get added to. So you, could, you can come into our program sometimes, not at this next class, which is the beginning, or we have several beginning classes, like holding space is one, that's a two-day class. Polarity immersion is another, that's a one-day class. And this one, cranial one, this is a beginning class of this whole program. And what it teaches you to begin with is how to orient yourself as a person. Those skills are vital in our world for living. Without them, I'd be nuts, I'm sure. But I have them and I do them every day and they help me be who I want to be and be in the world the way I want to be in it. So you'll learn how to orient yourself and you'll learn how to regard another person. Just what you saw me do, you learn those things and you'll learn how to help somebody very neutrally, but you will also learn techniques of addressing the body at different levels, at the feet, at the pelvis, at the cranium. You'll also learn how to honor the fascia of the body. So there's a lot of levels of technique that you learn in the, every class is like that. You learn something about how you're being, and that's personal, and you go through your own process, and you learn a skill set. And at each level, so this week, these two days by themselves is also almost a complete package. Like if you just did those two days, you would learn something so profound. Mm. And when I learned it, it changed my life. Right. And everybody I speak to, when they learn it, and the students in the class, they go, because it's one thing to get it in your brain, but as you start to feel it, and be in it, that's a whole other, yeah. whole other level. That's an experience, an experiential embodiment. Yes. And you really know it. Yes. And the more you do it, the more you know it. Mm. Like I, I tell, you know, the more you do it, the more you engage in it, the deeper you become to yourself. You know, I, I say, I think that what I offer people more than the expertise of my technique is the field that I have. Yeah. I think my field, I've been in the gym for 40 years working out in the field. And my field is gotten really strong. Some people just get, they get well a little bit. Mm. Or a lot. Or a lot. I've worked on people, I love to work on people pre and post surgically. Hmm. Those people have healed 100% in massive kinds of you know, operations from injuries, etc., and they have no, no disability left after the surgeries that they've done. They heal 100% because they get their energy going and because they get space held for them to unwind the trauma of accidents, injuries, and illnesses. Gary, you mentioned that the work can go deeper online. So how is that? Why would that? Why is that? Well, Energy doesn't know any boundaries because anything, if let's just say everything's made of energy, if it is, then when you start to talk to energy, you're talking to everything. Mm -hmm. No other thing has that to it. There's no other thing that's everything. Our, our, look, just you, our satellites, 
send a funny little vibration and your cell phone, what are we doing here? Right. From some little bit of vibration that goes through the atmosphere, really. And we're doing all this. This is amazing what we're able to do in here, but it's through energy that we do this. Right. So, so then, if really, I've had people, I, I don't want to go into great detail, but I've had people, we did a session over the phone and whatever illness they had disappeared. Gone. Within a week, they were told they had to get surgery. And they went back on Friday and they said, oh, you don't need surgery. And they didn't get it. Now, you've got to say, why? What? I have to say that. Yeah. How did that happen? I'm going like, wow, that was powerful. I have no clue. We were just doing what we did. And they said, you know what? I went back in. They said, there's nothing there. I said, get out. But no, nothing there. They never had the surgery. And I've had that happen so many times. It doesn't always happen. But when it does, you go like, really? And they say, yeah, that was it. It was over. I never had it again. Hmm. So... So energy is underneath everything, and when you touch it, you're com communicating big time. So the the class that you're going that we're off that you're offering the structure of it is nine thirty in the morning until six thirty at night. Yes. Right. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about what that experience uh, can be like? Yeah. Well, I'm very sensitive to this. It's not going to be like we're just sitting in front of this thing the whole time. That's not it. And this is what I do when I teach. I usually teach a principle and then I show them how to use it. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of exercises that you have to do. You're not getting there through your brain. I mean, your brain is a good tool. But clearly your brain is not your consciousness and you are not your brain and it's not the way we're going to do this. You have to do it. So I always teach a little bit and then I go have them do it. And in this environment, I have them do it in a breakout room or I even have them do it with people in their home or their life. I encourage them to go and get a body and get someone to lay down and do that. So we have a little bit of information and exercise. We take a break, we come back, a little bit of exercise, and then we, then we come back and we talk about it. You know, a little bit of information, exercise, and review whatever's going on. It's very methodical. And it gets people to the competency of being able to hold space and being able to do cranial work. And I can say that, you know, 100%. And then I, do I understand that there's cranial sacral unwinding level one, two, and three? So there's a, deep, there is. There's a deepening path. There and, is. Uh, and everything is offered through the open center. Correct. Uh, and now online. Uh, but then yes. also offered in California. Well, I, yeah, I teach these, I mean, I have classes going on in my school and in our schools, and I don't teach all of them, but I teach this class, I just taught this class a little while ago in Arizona, and I'm teaching it this weekend in person in LA outside, and um, I won't teach this class again probably till in another place in Arizona, I think in February, something like that. Okay. So these classes are offered continually, and, and there are other teachers also. And, but at the Open Center, I'm the only teacher that teaches there. That's unique. There's not one place in the world, this is the only place in the world where I teach and have schools and have relations where I teach every single class. I love that. I think that's really special for us to have access to you that way. And I have to say, I'm not, I wish to be with you face to face, but the fact that yeah. I don't have to go into the city, that I could be anywhere and be and learn this is really such a generous gift, isn't mm. it? And it's, isn't it such a unique opportunity for all of us? I, I, think, I think we, you know, this time, I, I know there's so much going on and I don't want to talk about that, but this is the greatest opportunity for us to grow and evolve. And to move into things that are easier for us, easier ways of learning and being together. I found greater intimacy through Zoom than I was experiencing in person. And I do this all the time. I mean, I had a great class. I've had great classes in person. And it's, it's a much needed nutrient. We need to do it. We need to find a way to negotiate that and make it healthy. But this is profound. And it opens up what I think is coming in our world. We're supposed to be more equipped. We're supposed to, it's supposed to be easier. It was, I had a friend who was in ceremony and, and one of the people there connected with the COVID virus. 
at a conscious level okay. and had a conversation with the COVID virus. If you can, why not, right? Sure. And the COVID virus said to my friend, you've been asking for a break for so long. Your life has really been out of balance. It's been too much. I'm giving you the break so you can come back to yourself and come to a higher level of realization. That's what the COVID virus said to them. Not I'm causing havoc, not I'm here because you guys are bad, or no, I came here positively out of the intentionality of people evolving. And I, I like that, even if that is, you know, if that isn't perfect or, you know, I don't care. I like that so much because it's, it is, I find that people suffer greatly, and we all have our share, when we think that things are separate from us or that they're wrong. But when we embrace them for what they are and we learn from them and grow from them, we heal. And so when we make the world, everything in the world is a part of us a little bit, because we are connected, then we have way less stress. Well, that's really inspiring. And I do, I feel very much uh, aware of how, what a special opportunity it is to be with you and to learn with you and that we can do this deeply online uh, and come right back into our homes and our communities and support ourselves and our loved ones. And so I thank you very much for staying so healthy and uh, vital and also being expansive and being really committed to sharing your work and your teachings. Thank you. That's very sweet. Of course. Well, back at you. Thank you. So what would we I know you've got to get back to a client, so we're going to get, get you there, but anything else that you'd like to say, um, last words for our audience? Well, definitely. I think, I think just watching this is valuable, of course. Mm -hmm. And I think any part of this is. Um, and I, this changed my life and gave me a way in the world that is, has integrity. And I think we all want some, something like that. And I have to honor the Open Center because the Open Center has been creating an environment and platform for people to become resourced because it knows that this is a part of like what's good in the world. And it's done it so with such great commitment through everything all these years and still doing it. And I'm so touched by that, the longevity and the intentionality and the visionary intent of everybody that holds the space is profound and in our world we take things for granted we just think everything runs on that, that kind of a thing and the open center is profound and i'm grateful all the still grateful to come to class at the open center and be able to have a connection with people and to work with them on what i care about and and please if it's right for people then i want them to come and 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 i doubt that anybody will be disappointed i think everybody will I, my, the people that I was teaching a class the other day and somebody came up to me and said, and this is partly why you teach actually, they said, I am, I can't tell you how grateful I am that you are here doing this and that we get to come and do that. And just that, that's it. That's the whole deal right there. And then I go, oh, that's why I'm doing, yeah, okay. Um, and I got to readjust and go, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. Big props to the Open Center, who is still, right? yeah, they just launched a website, a new website. The wow. core team is still there. They yeah. are moving and shaking. They're making it easier for us to have access to people like you and teachings. Mm. And you, you're all a, a tribe and you're a healing tribe. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you, Gary. Um, tell me the name of your institute again in California. It's called Life Energy Institute. And your website? Lifeenergyinstitute.net. Great. And then Open Center. And if you looked up my name, Gary Strauss, on the web, if you Googled me, it would come up right up there because of all these things I've done. I'm kind of everywhere. Okay. Excellent. And then opencenter.org is a great place for people to come in and 
understand you and there, you've written on it. We have yeah. information about your upcoming programs and the certificate. Yeah. So with all of that said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything Back that you're you. doing. Thank you. We're going to say goodbye to our audience. Blessings, everybody. Happy fall. And we'll see you in class on October 15th. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Anna. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.